So at this time, from our perspective here on planet Earth, the sun has made a move with the backdrop of the hexagram that we associate with 54. 54 hexagram, so that particular part of the star fields is behind the sun as the sun, from our point of view, moves across the sky in that way. And we're going into something very different now. We're still in the root center of the human design chart, the root center where we see either it's a, this great pressure to get on and do stuff in life, it's just raw pressure, or we can see this is where Mother Earth supports us. Mother Earth wants us to grow and expand and come to fruition in our lives. So the difference here is that the 54 is in what we call the tribal circuitry. And tribal circuitry is, what can I say? It's it, the key word for the tribe is support. That within the tribe, within the family, within the community, the corporation or whatever it is, there's a kind of influence to support each other in providing for a growth forward. And this 54th gateway is, what can I say? It's at the bottom end of the totem pole. It's at the bottom end of the food chain in a way. And it's the beginning. It's the beginning of what we call the entrepreneurial circuitry in human design. And so we very often look to see what is the source of entrepreneurism? What is it that impels somebody to be an entrepreneur or kind of gives that sense of I've got something really different in me that I want to put out. There's this pressure to produce this into the world. So we're going to see very much about that in this 54th hexagram. Here are the pages. I'm calling the, the hexagram ambition. Right, the ambition to grow in life, to expand, to come off the bottom end of the totem pole, to rise up, to accomplish in life. And particularly as an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur will know it's always going to go their own way. They're going to find their own way through. The particular channel involved with the 54 it makes a connection across to the spleen center, up to the left side of the chart. And the spleen center all about physical health and well-being, and, the, and it's the gateway 32 on the other end of that channel. We call the channel transformation in the sense that it's bringing energy out of a raw source, an ambitious source, wants to grow, wants to expand and put out something into the world. And the 32 on the one side of it is this instinctual sense of what it is that's needed, how to direct this flow of energy. The, on the other side of it is the fear of failure. So 54 is always kind of tuning into, is this going to go anywhere? Is this urge within me going to go anywhere? This ambition. If we look at the wheel, we're looking now right up in the top. We're in the Capricorn center and uh, or Capricorn area of the sky in terms of astrology. The chop marks here are solid solid broken which is the key for tui and for joy so the foundation of this particular hexagram is joy the top part of it is uh, the thunderclap the uh thunder over the lake or we might say you know there's kind of a potential shocking energy here in this expansion of joy here or in this growth of joy so 32 is one of the gateways we looked at in the spleen center and as they say this whole channel of potential transformation uh in a moving of energy into something that kind of really expands our resources. So here we are, ambition, both material and spiritual. And this is uh, definitely something to be recognized about this 54th hexagram. It's kind of odd in a way. There are a lot of stories that go back. And, and if you do the traditional translation from the Chinese, it's called the marrying maiden. And the story behind the marrying maiden is somebody, a young girl, who marries into a station above the family that she's coming from. All right, sounds a bit chauvinist. But there's a good story that goes behind it, is that one of the concubines for the emperor in China, amongst hundreds of concubines potentially, recognizes what's going to happen when the emperor drops dead, which he's going to do the way he's living his life. And she makes all kinds of connections in the court. And what happens is instead of getting buried along with the emperor, because she's made all these connections, she rises up in the court and actually becomes the empress herself and has a very commanding lifetime from that point on. So she followed her ambition 
saw what was needed, where to make the connections, and took over pretty much. So that is something of the power of the energy in this particular hexagram, the 54. Proceeding in life through committing first to your own independence, right? Not beholden to anyone in particular. Find out what it is that's moving you, what it is that's essential within you. And then making connection to outside sources that can assist, right? So that whole thing of who's with me, and it's saying both material and spiritual. And it's about literally honoring your gods, honoring any source that you recognize directly can bring about great resource and assistance for you in your own growth in life. So then we have the commentary, maintaining your balance in what often turns out to be subordinate and even demeaning situations. You've got to start somewhere. Bottom of the food chain, bottom of the totem pole, somewhere or other. You've got to start and just see, all right, what's going on here? What's this urge within me? And finding that, maintaining that balance allows you to align with your own guidance, right? We're talking here type and authority. We're talking about that urge. How do you harness that urge that directs you to your own strength and ways to advance, right? So you can just see it's, it's this 54 has this enormous potential energy within. There are no limits implied here, but it's just a case of mapping things out, realizing, okay, got to start somewhere and just see how do I work my way through this? Am I really that ambitious? Is there really that thing that's driving me? Are there certain things I want to arrive at? And it just turns out the 54 is at the bottom of this, of this movement of the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial energy. The top end of it is the 45, which is the queen, which is the king, which is the ruler, which is the overall responsible one that handles the whole material scene. So the 54 is the movement, the start point for this energy to evolve and to go up the food chain, to go up the totem pole, if you will. So let's have a look, see at the lines. And lines, as we know, they always expand on the picture of any hexagram. And the first line is going to give us the foundation of what this particular hexagram is all about. What is ambition all about? And the first line says, be confident, right? Be confident. And here's the whole thing. Have we ever been encouraged to be confident in ourself? Or is it more in the things that we do? Is it more our station in life? Yeah, I just fit in this pigeonhole here. I fit in this thing here. And this is antithetical to the entrepreneur. The entrepreneur is seeking to do their own thing. They have this urge to move on. So the whole thing is being confident. Okay, I have no idea where this thing's going necessarily. I have a vision in sight. But it's saying, you know, even in lowly situations, wherever you start off, be true to yourself. How are you true to yourself? You trust your own type of authority. You trust your own design. Whatever that might be, it's unique. You have a unique frequency. There are no two people on this planet living the same life. You may have a very similar chart to somebody else. You are not living their life. You have the vehicle that might match theirs, right? Two Ferraris, but it's not like you're going to go the same way. So the whole thing with the 54 is find that inner confidence, that drive. What is it that that urge that wants to come forth here? You complete everything in your life by associating with those who can lend their support. Well, yeah. I mean, we start off in family situations and very often we get allies within the family. If not there, we may start a little enterprise of some sort and see who are the clients and customers, who are the people that support me, who are the ones that work, want to work along with me. And so that's the whole thing of finding out who lends their support. Key word for anything in the tribal circuitry, support. Who's with me? Right. So the, the concubine that comes, the empress, she's making very specific connections in the court, people that are going to facilitate her growth. So here with Pluto's energy, you grow in life regardless of perceived limitations because of your many associations, right? Friend working, networking, all kinds of people. Who is it that's in some way in tune with your aspirations? The other side of it, Venus side, 
seeking politically correct associations rather than those that may actually assist you. Yeah, oh, well, I'm supposed to make a connection with there, and I should go through this channel here, and, and then you find, oh, actually, it's not taking you where you want to go. And these people have their own interests anyhow. They have their own vested interests. They don't necessarily want you to succeed. All right? So just being very aware of that, the nature of this thing is be confident in yourself, recognize the drive that's coming through you. What do you really want out of this? Where would you like life to take you? Second line. Second line always has this natural approach. Doesn't necessarily look for input, but actually can be quite well attuned to those that really can assist. And it calls itself resolving, holding firmly to your vision of transformation. That's the bottom line with it, right? Input from other people might disturb that vision, might disturb that sense of where you want things to go. Having a clear perception of what you consider right, right? We all know what's right. That's just something within us. We also know what's wrong. Right? What's right is what it is that resonates with you. Right? Having a clear perception of what you consider right or feeling entitled to special assistance. Well, people are supposed to help me in this, aren't they? And you look around the world and you just see there's not an awful lot of encouragement to be yourself. Yes, there are people that are cheering you on one way or another, but if you go off the on your own tangent in a way, you go off in your own entrepreneurial thing around saying, well, you know, why don't you just get a steady job and a safe thing? The entrepreneurial path is tricky. You have to be really tuned into who it is that can facilitate and what are the right steps to make and recognize, you know, failure is part of it. I mean, talk to Edison about his light bulb. Thousands and thousands of failures before the thing actually worked. And even then, there was room for a lot of improvement on it. So Saturn's energy here, it is important to maintain the quality of your interactions with those who assist you. Right? It's very easy to take somebody's input and then ignore them. It's a, it's a really good thing to maintain clear associations, clear connections with people that give you a leg up. You know, you can show your gratefulness to getting there. The Mars side of it, your occasional recklessness can make you take advantage of influential people in your life. If you've ever been in a place of influence, you know what it's like when somebody just kind of grabs something off you, some association with you, name drops or something or other, and, you know, makes use of that, makes free use of it. It can be a little galling. And the second line doesn't lack any capability to expand, but it's just saying it's about hold your right vision and recognize where are the associations that really can commit to supporting you in a right way. We're always looking for win-win. You know, it's a great thing to be in a place of influence to be able to encourage other people. But it's great when we get the appreciation back as well at the same time. Third line. Third line is called being prudent, right? Third lines are always potentially a little reckless, right? First one in, not quite sure what's involved here, but you know, we'll just jump in and see as it, how it turns out as we go along. So the third line is called being prudent. Compromising yourself is possible through indiscretions. Not a great feeling when we get compromised or we just take a wrong step or we make a wrong connection somewhere or other and all of a sudden we realize, you know, everything's playing against us. And here it says you patiently avoid shortcuts to transformation. Right? Yes, there are shortcuts, but this is about being patient about recognizing, you know, am I really on track with this thing? Is the transformation possible? Or you grasp every time, every chance and find great trials. You start getting involved in too many people. You start owing favors in all kinds of different directions and they're not and they're not working out for you. So Pluto here gives it a flavor, employing many different alliances to proceed in life. You move through your limitations. It's just being really attuned to who's assisting, who's not. What's needed, what's not. Right, just really, what are the commitments that are essential? And there it is, you know, third lines always have that issue around making commitments. And it's just that thing, there has to be that kind of sense of win-win. If you're gonna have somebody advance you, there has to be something in it for them as well. 
The other side of it with Venus, you compromise yourself through relationships with anyone who might advance you in life. And there it is. You start making some tricky associations. And the, the world is full of stories about making associations with people that then demand that you are going to work for them or put in all kinds of effort on their behalf. So third line, it's just saying, be prudent, right? The, the, the drive is there, the ambition is there, but it's about really watching who and what is going to make, the, make things evolve for you. So then we come to the fourth line, and the fourth line is a very different line. It's called illuminating. So I said when we started looking through this particular hexagram, it's about making associations on both material and spiritual levels. We are all spiritual beings in a human body. And there are many, many layers to that. We have a physical body, we have a mental body, we have an emotional body, we have an astral body, we have a spiritual body. Goodness knows how many bodies there are, you know? And it's like, there are so many areas in which life can reach to us. And I said, this is the hexagram where the bottom three chop marks are solid, solid, broken, joy, and then above it is the thunderclap. And the fourth line is where the thunderclap all of a sudden makes itself evident. And I say very often to people with the fourth line is that life can be going along. You know, it looks like you're, you're in a very straightforward approach to things that whatever enterprise you're involved in is doing very nicely. And then all of a sudden the lights go out. Or we might say, if you remember how films used to be made with a camera with a film in it you know you you take the photograph and you send the film box off to get processed and what comes back is a negative what's called a negative and from the negative they print a positive so the negative is all the colors are inverted and so my image of the 54 with the fourth line is you can be going along everything's obvious where you're going and all of a sudden all the colors invert everything goes back to front and the whole thing is can you maintain your balance can you see okay life is showing me something very different here am i going to lose my track am i going to lose that sense of self-confidence that i started out with in the first line acknowledging that existence has her plans for us and in one way this is one of the most extraordinary unusual lines in the I Ching. It's just existence has her plans for it. Every now and again, the lights go out and we're kind of floundering around a little bit. We're on a tightrope and we're not quite sure. Shall I put a foot forward still? And here it says transformation in its purest form. When you realize that what you want is not necessarily worth having. Right? Everything inverts. What you want, what you're going after, what you're ambition is taking you towards you all of a sudden you realize i don't really want this it doesn't really have any substance for me and then finding out how to live with that can you let go of it and we, this works on so many different levels in life you know we can have our heart set on something you know i really want to have this i want to have this in my life and then all of a sudden something changes and you're oh my goodness i actually have no interest whatsoever but I'm still aiming myself towards it. What am I going to do about that? And what happens is you find equanimity in the balance between the earth and the spirit planes. So in a sense, this 54 with the fourth line can be really shocking. It's most unusual. The thunderclap gets right through and pops your bubble, pops your balloon. And you just see there's an opportunity in that moment to make a really radical course connection that you start putting your attention or your connections in a very very different way in your life the ambition is still there but it's shifted it's shifted after chasing after something that looked like it was right for you and then all of a sudden you realize my goodness no something else has to happen here i'm being shown something different existence has her plans for us oh we thought it was all cut and dried and we then we get to the fifth line. The line is called finding spirituality. Holding high principles in all aspects of your life. So when we think of the word ambition, we can say, oh, well, somebody's just, you know, they're just going after it. Regardless, they're using their elbows, they're pushing their way through. They've got such an ambition to get on with things. 
But then there's also those that have this very long-term viewing of things. You know, my ambition is to have an extraordinary life, to be sovereign in my own life, to have a really amazing life experience. And I will seek to see who crosses my path and who am I drawn to to make connections. How am I going to honor my spiritual nature here, my spirit being? And so the fifth line very often lives in a bubble of other people's ideas of who you are and what you're about. And here it says holding high principles in all aspects of your life. It's about being really honorable to yourself before engaging your ambition in the world around you. You make yourself available to assist the needs of the times and stability for transformation. Fifth lines always have that overview. They can see what it is that can really benefit not only themselves, but everybody else. And you know, if you're just overly ambitious, you can be pushing through everybody and everything to get your way. But here's a kind of interesting side to it. It's saying, look, remember the higher aspects of things. You know, that, that you just keep on pushing. You get to the end of things like Alexander the Great. He had an ambition to conquer the whole world and he dies. And his, his instructions when, he de when he's dead, he says, carry my coffin and leave my hands hanging out of it. You know, just show, yeah, I had the whole world and I can't take it with me. I'm done. Nobody could cure me of whatever illness I caught. I'm a young man and my ambition, yes, it took me all over the place, conquered all kinds of people. But so what? I'm bereft and dead. So this fifth line is really pointing towards that as the natural leader, as the natural guide for people to just say, be very alert about how you use this ambition. With the sun's energy here, with your bright nature, you go out of your way to ensure that what is necessary happens. Right? What is necessary? And again, we're going back to this whole sense of what it is that's right. All of us know within ourselves what's right. You know, when we're taking a wrong track on things, we're going to give ourselves a little tap on the shoulder sometime. With the Earth's energy here, if you overly identify with mundane aspects of your life, you limit your potential transformation. Right? So the mundane things with Alexander's case was, well, he owned all this property in all these different places. He conquered all these people. But in the end, there was nothing there. It was like, there was, these were all mundane things. And in the end, a major part of the life experience has to be living so well physically that the spirit side of life is so completely accommodated as well, that we really are spiritual beings in a human form and having an amazing time. We get to the sixth line. Sixth line always has that complete overview of everything in the hexagram you can see you know where it's worth making connections you know who can really help along here and you know go to the temple do the right thing there and the line is called being politically correct and it says watch all of your purpose and sincerity and sincerity is a really important thing with this thing of ambition energizing those interactions that are essential or just being seen to do the right thing Right? We know the whole thing of doing the right thing is a very political act. Well, I've got to get the votes. You know, people have got to like me. I've got to be seen to be doing the right thing. And there it is. The sixth line can do that. The ambition is so intense that they'll just butter up everybody along the way. And you have to be careful about that. Watchful of your purpose and sincerity. How sincere are you? The Saturn side of things, the discipline side, being honest in your motives, you stick to respectfully advantageous relationships, right? The ones that are actually in tune with you, they're respectfully. You're not taking advantage of people. You're not squashing people or pushing people aside in going forward in your own life. You just see, yeah, there's a natural progression here. And it's about being really honest in motives. You're just letting other people know I'm going to the top. That's where I'm going. You know, are you prepared to assist with me? The other side of it here with Jupiter, wasting energy and doing the right thing. You concede that transformation is impossible. 
doesn't matter how high you climb, you get to the top, you become the CEO, whatever, three heart attacks and three divorces later, and you're no better off for it. You just did the right thing. You pushed your way through all the time, compromised yourself at every turn. And that is also possible with this 54th hexagram. So again, being really careful about this, recognizing what is the ambition all about? What is the drive all about? And is it something that comes from honestly from within? Is there really this push forward from within to grow and to expand and to have a really extraordinary lifetime? And that's what it's all about.